Hello students. In the last topic, we have clear, uh, done our implicit object. Now we are going to do GSP directive. This is very important regarding the page structure and you have to include any packages. So this will help you a lot. So we will move to our GSP directive. So the GSP directive is a message that tells the web container how to translate a GSP page into the corresponding servlet. So we have a lot of things to do like we have to include the packages. We have to include a file. We have to specify the package we want to add in our project. So there are three types of directive: page directive, include directive, and tag -like directive. Okay. So the syntax to declare any directive is less than modulus add a date and a directive. Here the name of the directive that is page include or tag -like, whatever you want to specify or using. Then the attribute and the value you have to specify it and modulus greater than. This is a closing tag. Okay. So we have taken a few uh, directives of the page directive. Okay, we have a lot of directives available, but these are the list of important directives uh, that is most frequently used and very important regarding your projects also because you have to use these in your projects also. Okay, in the web project. So the syntax of GSP page directive is less than modulus add a rate page. So here we will define the, the the name of the directive. And the attribute and the value we are going to use. Okay, so one by one we are going to use uh, these type of directives. So first, the attribute of GSP page directive is import. So first we will cover import. In the import, the import attribute is used to import the class or interface or all the members or of a package. It is similar to the import keyword in Java class. Like we have done in our core Java programming that we will import any package or any class specific. So here the same way we can also import the package. So what's the syntax for that? We have to import so model uh, modulus at a rate page. Then we have to use the import equals to the, the name of the package is util package and the class is date. Okay, and here we'll directly print the whole date. So let's do it practically also. Suppose uh, we have any page. Uh, okay, so here we have our index page, and we are going to import any package. So the, automatically the list in, uh, will show. So I am going to import. Okay, so Java dot. So list of packages it will show. So I'm going to use suppose uh, let's suppose map. Uh, no, have to use it util package for date and date. Okay. Now next we have and now we are going to run the index page. So you will see that the date appears first and then we have a form and a login and the clear button. Okay. So in this way we can import the package and use in our JSP page. Then we have next one. Content type. So this is again we uh, we specify the content type attribute and it defines the mine extension that is multi-purpose internet mail extension 
and the by default it have a value of tax obli html and a character set that is use iso 8859-1 so uh, in this way we will specify the content type or you can change it also you can specify the application or ms word if you have another type of uh, particular content type you want to specify it okay then we have a language so by default the language is java if you want to change you can change it also you can also see that here i think it will show the language also it will not show here so the language equals to java okay you can specify in this way now next we have an error page okay so the error page is the error page is used to define the error page that is if an exception occurs in the current page it will be redirected to the error page suppose we have the error page okay so we can specify the error page as my error page dot gsp first we have to define this my error page dot gsp and if there is any uh, error occurs then it will be redirected to this page okay so it will be a uh, redirected to a new page okay so we have to design an error page so how can we do this so suppose we have the uh, any simple page and we have to convert it into the error page so this is the name of the page that is my error page dot gsp and here we will specify that is error page equals to true okay so let's create it new gsp so the name of the error page is my error page okay so here we are going to do what we have to do is we have to define it is error page Okay. So is error page equal to true and we have to specify the exception. Okay. So so now this particular my error page is your error page okay so suppose you have an error in a particular page it will be redirected to this page how can we do this so here we'll define error page an error page is the name of the error page is my my error page dot gsp okay so in this way we will handle the particular error so suppose uh, if any error occur in this page then it will be redirected to the this particular error page okay so I will show it to you how can this particular thing will work so suppose we have two text fields username and password it will be converted to suppose here we will specify first number and then second number okay so then this particular first number and second number you will input it will be redirected to the login page okay so in the login suppose we will Set change the username as F number uh, 
फर्स्ट नंबर एंड सेकंड नंबर ये भी है फर्स्ट नंबर सेकंड नंबर बट वी कैन नॉट डू एनी डिवीजन और एनीथिंग विद अ स्ट्रिंग सो लेट्स हैव अ डबल the change the name into the double we have to change it into the double and here we what we have to do is we have to do double dot pass double so the parameter t1 will receive and it will be converted to double and then it will be stored to the variable fn and he in the same way we will also do it for the second number also okay so now we have two things and we converted this and can print this as fn divided by fn Okay, now I will run this code. So now we have a first number suppose twelve, and second number suppose we have zero. so here we have an infinity okay so infinity is not defined so in this way suppose if any type of exception will occur it will be redirected to this particular error page or you can have a message regarding the exception okay uh, suppose Uh, if any type of exception you are going to do then we can have that particular exception okay so in this way we will define the error page and we will redirect it to the error page if any exception occurs so next we have a include directive so the include directive is used to include the content of any resource suppose it may be a jsp file html file or index file so how can you do this It's very easy. Suppose you have to include any file, then you have to specify that modulus at the end include file, and then the resource name. So suppose you have a header, any header you have defined, any header you have designed, then you have to include this in a particular HTML or JS in particular JSP page, and you have to specify the include and the file name. Suppose we have any code uh, and we want to reuse it again and again, then we will uh, include that particular file. Okay. In the, this thing I will do in the JSP when I am going to implement the connectivity or connectivity part. So in connectivity, I will do that. I will have a particular connection string and I will include every time. So it is very easy to reuse it. Okay. Uh, I will show you how can we do this. Suppose uh, we have any a uh, particular page. Okay. And we have to find it in the way like. Uh, uh jdbc connection okay. so
we don't need in this we have uh, now we need only the J, uh, the code of the jsp okay so we have already then done our uh, jdbc code let's take it from there yes uh, here so we have this particular thing common so every time i have to write it so suppose i have uh, copied it and i have just stored it in like this so uh, connection and the driver manager you have to include so you have to specify import so these are available in SQL package so now that I have gone okay so now this particular code suppose I want to include this code in any other in code okay so now this code is common for all the connection so suppose I have the login.gsp code and I want to include this code so simply I will do what I will simply here write I have to include it so here I will write load file and the file is JDBC connection.jsp okay so now this particular code is now accessible in the my uh, this login.jsp code okay so now you don't have to write this again and again you simply include this code okay so i think you have clear concept of this include now we have a next gsp the tag lib directory this is the last directive i want to explain so this gsp tag lib directory is used to define a tag library that define many tags so we use tag library descriptive file to define the tags for that we have suppose we have a particular server and we have our uh, different tags our predefined tag so we have to define this uh, predefined tag library and the prefix of tag library and the, uh, then with the help of prefix tag library we will use these tags it's very easy so basically suppose you have a uh, website united.ac.in and you have defined all the tags and kept in the particular folder tags and the prefix of the tag is my tag okay so if you want to access any tag you have to use this particular prefix then you have to specify the colon and you have to specify the particular tag you are going to use so simply you write my tag is a prefix and then colon it will show the list of tags and you can use it okay so the, basically this is used if you have so many tags and you are going to use any particular tag with the help of prefix but what you have to do is you have to create a, a list of tag libraries and you have to store in your server also so uh, with the help of this you can use this particular tag library okay so that's all for today i think you will have a clear concept of this in the next lecture i will explain the jsp action tags so that's all for the uh, today's lecture you can uh, implement these concepts in your project also and side by side you also start your projects also so today we have completed the page directive include directive and tag lib directive okay thank you